Bird. Hello, Simon Phillips. How are you today? Tell tell people about the the plot and experience of your film called The Mousetrap. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for having me. I'm very well. My the plot. My goodness, this is going to be easy. Oh, yeah. um, Mickey Mouse, rather Steamboat Willie's <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Uh, traps a bunch of kids, not kids, teenagers, I suppose, uh, 21 year olds, uh, in an arcade one night. Young adults, be respectful. Yes, sorry, they're young adults. <laughs> I should use the right language. He traps them uh, um, on uh, Alex's 21st birthday, a girl that works at the arcade. They have a bit of an impromptu birthday party, and he sort of locks them inside and starts to play with them a bit cat and mouse style. <laughs> in what we're affectionately calling a mousetrap. And uh, he starts picking them off one by one. Now, why is he doing this? Well, you have to watch the movie, I'm afraid. That, I can't give you that kind of spoiler. Okay, and so that's the plot. Tell me about the experience. What's the vibe? What are people going to feel? What's the, what's the tone? Right. So, Michael, I'm an 80s baby, right? So I grew up on a lot of these 90s horror movies. So think 90s horror slasher, like cheesy mm. Kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. with this, this movie, by the way, is a ridiculous idea that we had and we just ran with it. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, we had a lot of fun doing it. So people really need to bear that in mind. Do not take this too seriously. Um, so, but I used to like all the, like, I know what you did last summer, Scream, yeah. you know, Freddy Krueger movie. You know, don't mm -hmm. don't take them too, too, you don't take them too seriously and you'll have a lot of fun watching them, you know, sort of um, when you have approach it with that mindset. So to me, hopefully you feel like it's a bit of a 90s yeah. slash sort of retro feel to it. That's oh yeah, I mean. retro. Yeah, like the like a little retro filter there. Uh, go and I think I think what you said is correct. Go with a an a, an open mind, open to fun. Yeah, you know don't, well, that's the problem. That's the problem. Some of these people are over here. We're just having a good time. I know, but some of them are like you know this isn't going to make the Oscars long list. You know that, right? Uh, like, yes, well, heck, that's okay. Them. That's okay. I don't want everything to make the Oscars short list. So no, tell no. me a little about your character. Well, my character, uh, he's is Steamboat Willie's Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. Um, he gets it. Well, actually, sorry, he's the he's the owner of the arcade or the manager of the arcade, and right. he gets possessed, uh, by Mickey Mouse. So he becomes uh, Steamboat Willie's Mickey Mouse. We have to keep saying Steamboat Willie, right? So <laughs> the, the, the original. That's what the lawyers all telling us. They're all having fun with us. So they like, must make sure they know it's that. Because Michael Disney still own all the other iterations of Mickey Mouse. There, have I said enough? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we have to keep saying that. But he's uh, so he's the original Mickey Mouse. Though you wouldn't recognize him. He's he's uh, uh... like he has um this little guy. He has a uh, oh, he's out of blood there. He doesn't have any eyebrows. He has black eyes. He's black and white. That's so he different. has to look a certain way. Uh, he does. He doesn't wear white gloves. Doesn't have the red jumpsuit, etc., no. etc. So we're definitely talking about him. Um, and he, he, he character, the cartoon character uh, jumps out of the screen and possesses my body, if you like, and makes me do all these crazy things uh, to these kids because he's mad at these kids because they've grown up in not watching cartoons. They're now on <laughs> cell phones. Is this some sort of statement? Is there like something against like the uh, like a, a market that's um, perhaps oversaturated with Disney products? No, do you know what? I, I, my the way I look at it right now is that uh, there's lots, there's lots of uh, content out there, obviously. But uh, mm -hmm. what kids aren't doing as much is playing, you know, sort of. So um, I think this is a hark back to actually physically playing. Nowadays, uh -huh. kids, are, you know, when you were young, sure you mm -hmm. watch cartoons, but then you you went outside and you played and you you got together with your friends and you played. Nowadays, you know, they watch cartoons and then they they go from watching cartoons to going on their iPads or playing video games a bit more, you know, sort of whether they're on Roblox or something like that. So it's all just different uh, screen experiences. Whereas when I was young, not to sound mm -hmm. like an old man, I was like, well, we did vary it up. We did go and ride our bikes and stuff like that. Because there actually wasn't that much, it wasn't 24 hours a day cartoons. So you right. had like, in fact, I'm sure you you may remember, Michael, is that, you know, cartoons were on at a specific time of the day. And if you didn't That's see true. it at that time, then you just didn't see it. <laughs> Okay, okay. Now, now I'm starting to get it. And I, now, now, now you get my anger at the world that is today. <laughs> well, okay, all right. Now I see your angle. I, I appreciate it. So, who who was the best cast member to work with uh, amongst these young adults me, who are? Me. Uh, I was people? the best cast member to work with. Hmm. I was the best cast member to work with. No, <laughs> definitely. 
But there are must. You, you're just not working with yourself. Come on, t- 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 talk to people. Hi, gas up the, the cast a little bit. What, the, what do they have going on? No, they were very good. Listen, these guys are all very, very good. A lot of these guys, it was their first movie. Uh, so man, did they get a roller coaster ride on that one? Um, I love. Uh, you know, some of my very good friends are in here. Uh, Demir uh, Kovic and Nick Biskovic, uh, wonderful. Benjamin Harris, who plays the sort of hockey. Uh, you know, sort of uh, the jock, as it were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I loved him and, and Benjamin did a wonderful job. Mackenzie Mills, uh, who was, uh, well, I can't tell you what Kit Mackenzie Mills is. She's the goth type chick who's uh, oh, yeah. is, uh, in our story and helps with the uh, narration. She's the sole survivor, I can tell you that. And uh, you should the final always, girl. Yeah, we should always be suspicious of a sole survivor, you know, sort <laughs> of, um, you know, because they control the narrative. Uh, so I think Mackenzie did uh, a wonderful job. But they all, I mean, they all, as a, as a group, they were all fantastic. They all had different... That's the thing I was saying about 90s slasher movies. They were, their characters are written very simply as well. Yes. There's not a lot of depth to them, you know, sort of, which is sort of deliberate by people, you know, it's not a, a lack of writing there. It's a, It's like, well, if you're making a 90s movie, there was the jock character, there was the popular oh, yeah. girl, there was the goth girl, and that, that, was a whole, that was a whole character, you know. That's, that's of, all there is to them. And, and, that's, and, that's, thing, and that's Some it. of these guys <laughs> have made marvellous... Uh, work with what the limited information that they're given about their character, so they did really well. Okay, let's say you let's say you have an independent cinema, you're an independent cinema owner, and you are doing a double bill with the mousetrap, and you're going to pair one of these ninety slasher movies or whatever with the, with the, with this film. Maybe you want to do something like like one hundred and eighty degrees different. What are you doing for a double bill? I, I suppose something completely opposite or something to complement. It, it could be. Let's say both. Let's say what a one eighty. I, I mean, my something closer to it. Yeah, my personal preference would be that they do it with they would double bill it with Scream with Wes and you know sort sure, of sure, um, sure. Because he was the one when when they did that movie, it ah. started to turn horror movies on its head. You know, like sort mm-hmm. of uh, they started to be sort of self referential. You know, like a right. horror horror movie. A, a lot of that movie was sort of pop culture, and they were using pop culture dangerously. Um, ah. And I quite liked how they started to turn that on its head. You know, sort of so, and we're doing. We're not all that dissimilar. All right. So, Scream is the 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 thematic double bill, but like uh, yeah. for something like alternative or something like a little different, but that is a uh, there's some sort of connection. What what were you going for? If there was some sort of connection, I'd have to say. Uh... Oh, that's a good question. I know. Do, do, you know, here's the temptation. Do I would I pair it with Fantasia? You know, or you know something. Yeah. Else? Whatever. Whatever. You know. Would I go? Would I go that way? Yeah, yeah, you know what I would. Yeah, a fantasy because fantasy. Pick. It's a you know, and it works because it's a lot of it is in your imagination a little bit still. It's mm-hmm. just uh, you know, it's like wow, man, this, these movies can be very strange. Uh, if you watch Fantasia now, it's just like you're like, what is going on? Uh, <laughs> oh oh yeah. I mean, I they, they're my guilty movies. I should start off by saying as well, I love, I do love Disney movies. I've got Disney Plus. You know, I watch it all the time. Oh yeah. I, I cancelled my Disney Plus. I had enough. I had enough? What do you mean you had enough? They're always releasing, like... You have to be... Here's the thing. You have to be in the mood for Disney, you know, sort of. And that, I, I don't mind that. I was like, because I'm always in the mood for Disney. Like, sort of, I quite like it, you know. I get it, but I like Star Wars. I'm like a like a bit of a dork with that. And they well, make these, have to, these mediocre shows all the time, and they can't have my money anymore. It's over. I'm not doing it. You just... You didn't, you've had enough? I'm just this strident crust. You're just now. like you're just like no, <laughs> Disney, this far, this far, no further. Do you know what I was suggesting to these guys that said absolutely not? Is that we should offer the movie to Disney? Like Disney should buy it. We should be on. Oh Disney wow! Movie. And I was, like, I, I was like, as ridiculous as that sounds, I was like, <laughs> that would have been a genius move, a genius PR move on Disney's account. Eh. Are you worried that they will take all your money? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I live every, every day with the lawyers going it's coming you know they're gonna yeah they're gonna do something and when they do right <laughs> they're going to destroy you They'll and i was like your I house think... it's over your, yeah your maybe son's maybe. growing up in a garbage can exactly they'll be like you you just never know right uh so i mean i don't know but we we followed the letter of the law we did we did it if you know i don't think disney are gonna bully us i don't think they care about us uh you know sort of we're not gonna take a after you know Deadpool and Wolverine this week, I had a very good week. Uh, I, I don't think we're on their Richter scale. We're well, certainly not going to take a lot of money off them. Heck, you might be at some point. And maybe I don't. Although 
I doubt my ability to work for Disney after this. You know, <laughs> any kind of background <laughs> check. Of stop going, Hold on, are you the guy that? Yeah, no, but no, no, not with someone else. Uh, all right, now tell me about your director, Jamie. What what are his strengths? What does he bring to the team? Oh, Jamie's one. So Jamie came to uh, the film world, if you like, as a, a DOP, a cinematographer. Mm. Uh, but he's directing this one. But uh, he, he's directed quite a few. But me and him have just we've done a few movies together. So we have a wonderful shorthand. Um, yeah. Like we like the same kind of films, the same kind of things impress us. So I mean, he he just he's a great visual guy for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, so staging scenes and making stuff look beautiful is uh, is, is definitely where he comes at it from. Um, and did and he that, write this? With this one, he had a lot of fun because we're in an arcade. So. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Did he write the scripts? No, no, no. He didn't write the script. No, no. It was just uh, I wrote the scripts. Um, oh. But he he came up with. Uh, I mean, you know, as with any director, they come up with tons of ideas that make it into the story. So I mean, it, also he didn't write the script. But you know how the the movie starts with a disclaimer because the You're right, yeah, the Star Wars crawl crawl. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's not Star Wars. It's generic space crawl. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. I take it back. It's generic. I wasn't looking I... closely enough. Same with the Mickey Mouse mask. I mean, you. It's not a Mickey yeah, Mouse you, mask. You have to. I understand how you might get confused, but there is no brand confusion. Uh, I don't any more trouble with Disney than we already are. <laughs> and where did you shoot that. this movie? Oh, it's shot in Canada, in Ottawa. So we found. Uh, okay. We offered it, yeah, because that's where I am right now. Oh, where are you in Canada? I'm at Carleton University right now. This is where I am. Oh wow! Well, we shot it in. Well, then you probably know this place. It's called Funhaven. Okay. Okay. I'm aware, like I went there when I was, you know, like yes. 10 years old or something. Sure, but it's but still I, the same. That's incredible. The same I saw there was a the casting director. Um, heck, I, her name's not coming to me now, but I've met her before. She's she's great, Lisa. Lisa. Oh, Lisa, music. Yes. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's I, saw, I started to see some names, and I'm thinking, heck, this this is like this is really an Ottawa thing, maybe. It, oh, it certainly is. Yeah, yeah. So it's. I mean, Jamie is. Uh, so it's Ottawa, Toronto. So we shot right. some of it in uh, in Toronto, but uh, most of it, the, the all the arcade stuff was shot in uh, in Ottawa in Funhaven. So wow. Yeah, so, and are some of those actors from Toronto, or where, where are some of them from? They're Ottawa? all from Ottawa. there. So they're, they're that's all it. from they're, Ottawa. They're all from Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. Uh, so that's impressive. Holy moly! Uh, we got it. Out. Ottawa's. You see, Ottawa's a small place, but uh, you're like, yeah. Oh, it was. Uh, it had a rich little. Uh, I mean, we got all the cast there, and I didn't know the cast. Um, so when we were getting cast together, we wanted to make it because uh, it was night shoots. We wanted people local to Ottawa because that would be a lot on them, um, and we needed them to be younger cast. You know, sort of. Of course. So too much, but yeah, and that's so Ottawa provided that and uh, and provided it very well. Well, it's nice to see a movie such as this come from Ottawa. You know, because sometimes I just associate only like Christmas movies with Ottawa. Yes, that's you know. Listen, if you're an actor and you live in Ottawa, I mean that's you're doing it. I I've done my fair share of Hallmark movies because that's all yeah. that Ottawa makes. That's what's happening. You're gonna meet meet Pierre David at some point. Yes, indeed you are. Yeah, good <laughs> <movie>. <laughs> right. Yes. Then don't tell him you like his Cronenberg movies. He doesn't care. Pierre David doesn't care about anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and um, so, do you th- do you think more movies like this should come from Ottawa? Like, because this this is a fun one, and um, you know, is 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 there a hope? Or or is 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 the Ottawa film market uh, going to slowly fall apart because they're just doing Christmas movies? Is uh, is oh is, no, nothing, nothing stopping those. What, what's happening in ten years? Oh no, no, no. There's a, there's a, listen, there's a there's a million people obviously that love uh, the Hallmark things i mean people want people who love those christmas movies just so you know that they release them there's actually a thing on hallmark called christmas in july like, you don't need probably... <laughs> and they release new movies new christmas movies so in funny. july because people need a bit of a, a fix and, so and it's funny. super popular uh like so like the, these this isn't a disastrous business man if they like there's people that want Christmas all year round, you know. So I mean, I love Christmas, uh, but it, obviously I love it because it's it's once a year. But uh, you know, I do I do really enjoy it. But there are people that like you know get excited about Christmas all the time, and in July <laughs> celebrate that and release a bunch of Christmas movies, and they do, and and they do really well. Loads of people watch them. Who's the ultimate Christmas Ottawa actor? The ultimate Besides yourself. No, no, no. I'm not in a lot of these, but there is there are a lot of people that are. Get all, I don't know. Uh, I don't. There's. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of 
There's a bunch of guys. Uh, there's, but there's, there's no they way switch out the leads often. Now, what happens is these Hallmark movies, they get the leads in from Los Angeles or America. Yes. Okay. So the, the top guy and girl, you know, it's always a bit of uh, a romantic story. And the top guy and girl are usually uh, brought in. They're imported from the United States. And then the it's the other cast underneath them that are all the other cast. So, uh, okay. Canadian cast. All right. And who is your favorite actor of all time? Oh, uh, Gary Oldman. Uh, oh, so wow. Okay. He just had such a good career, made such good choices. You know, he's a good character actor. You know, everyone, not everyone knows his name, uh, but you're right. like, once you see his face, or you've, you've probably not even seen his face. If you see something, some people will recognize him from Harry Potter. Some people recognize him from The Professional. Some people, you know, uh, he, he does, he's such a chameleon in terms of uh, what he's able to do. Uh, you know, so people recognize him from his movies rather than him as a his own person so I'll say. top three gary oldman roles oh well there's tinker taylor soldier spy well actually my favorite gary oldman movie is the professional uh leon I think nice. places um but then tinker taylor soldier spy certainly and then i look so this is you're gonna judge me for this third one but no. i love air force one with harrison force i love and, that movie yeah so and a bit of a nice when it came out it was fun it was very fun, and it, I don't think it's. I, I watched it re again recently. It does. It's still as fun. It's like I can watch these things over and over again. It's like Die Hard. Die Hard doesn't get any less fun, you know. So it was yeah, like, it's true. It's always good times. Absolutely. All right. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for your time. The movie's called The Mouse Trap. Hopefully, you guys can keep all your money, and your son doesn't have to grow up in a garbage pit. What's next for you? What's next is. Um, well, apart from what I'm doing right this second, which I won't talk about, um, but is uh, the next movie coming out is called Silent Bite. Um, and it's a Christmas horror movie um, where a bunch of bank robbers are holed up after robbing a bank on Christmas Eve, but they're also in the same motel as a bunch of vampires. And it's a, a boys versus girls, men's versus women. And I'm sure you know who loses in that fight. The... All right, well, thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael.